Today I'm going to be talking about how we can implement in lock time and standard multi-signature transactions without pay to script hash on Bitcoin SV. The Genesis upgrade is taking place in a few hours after recording this video. So I think it's important to review some functionality that will be completely restored. Technically you can implement some of this now, but it will be fully available with no limits in a few hours after the Genesis upgrade occurs. So the first page I'm on here is a blog post a few months ago from our favorite fraud and scammer, Craig Wright, talking about how you can create lock transactions for planning down the line. So in this post, he just talks about how you can create an in lock time transaction set, say 10 years in the future. And if you discard the private key, you can really take away any external forces that could interfere with that. So once the time comes, you will broadcast the transaction. But until then, it's no good. It's just sitting there. It's like a, a check that the bank, any bank would refuse to process until the date. But um, nothing can be manipulated. It can't be altered. And it's completely no good until that time. So we're going to talk about how we can uh, build that stuff out in the BSV JavaScript library. All right, so I'm gonna start and I'm gonna do this in Node. So if you see my previous tutorials, I have a fold, a parent folder for Node, and we're gonna appropriately name this folder Genesis, and then let's change into it. All right, so I'm going to in initialize my package, so npm init. So this just lets us create a package.json file with some metadata. I'm gonna take the defaults here for the most part. Um, I'll just say return to Genesis in lock time signature entry point and I'll just accept the rest of the defaults all right so we have that created and now I'm going to install the BSV library npm install BSV all right we're good um, let me you guys aren't seeing this, but I already have JavaScript files created. I'm going to copy those into, oops. I'm going to move those into the Genesis file. And now I'll open up Visual Studio Code and I'll go into my new folder. All right, so we're going to start with in lock time. Okay. So. I require the BSV and then I have some keys here. So I have a private key and then a address that I created from that private key. If we go to the documentation for Money Button, Money uh, Ryan create the, created this BSV library. Um, he's got some great tutorial videos where he talks about keys and how you can create them. I'm not going to get into that low level material, but there's already material that he has out here. So you can kind of see how those are created in JavaScript code. But that's, this is the manner that I created these. So I just created a single key and I derived an address from that. So I've already funded this address with a cent of Bitcoin. And we're going to create an in lock time transaction sending this back to my money button address. So I got this address from my money button account. All right. So we noticed this UTXO object. So let's talk about this. So Matter Cloud. That's an API that can be used to fetch data about transactions, do key management. It's like an interface to a node, a Bitcoin node. So what I can do is I can take that same address here and put it, paste it into this URL and get a UTXO representation of that, of what's in that uh, address. Um, if there's multiple UTXOs, those would be shown here. So you can see this brackets denote an array. But in this case, I just have a single one to make it simple. So we want to copy the object, not the actual brackets, and we would paste that into here. So I've already done it in my case to prepare, but you can see what we have here. So we've got some data here. We have the address of the input, the previous transaction ID, the output index, Satoshi amount. Not all this is necessary in order to uh, create our unspent output, but um, it's just simple for this case. But this could be more minimal. Um, if we were using this in a production type scenario. 
I'll skip over these two functions for a bit, but I'll talk about how we can create a transaction object from this UTXO. So notice we're creating a transaction using the BSV library, and then we say from, and then we just get the UTXO. So that instantiates our transaction based off this UTXO. I'm gonna call the change method and set that to the public address, which is the same as up here. So um, we're just doing simple examples. So any change would just go back to the same input address. And then in this two, I'm gonna set new address, which is my money button one. And then I'm going to set the output to the full Satoshi amount, which is 3,577 minus a calculated fee. So this is so we make sure our transaction is broadcast to the network and not rejected based off it not being one Satoshi per byte. All right. So there's two methods of time locking. We can do block height or we can do date based. The first I'll review is date based. So notice here I have a date set to February 4th, which is the day of the, uh, the previous date of the Genesis upgrade. Um, we need a Unix time value to pass into the time lock function in the BSV library. So this is just the way you can do it. Um, you guys can do some research on that type of stuff. I'm not going to cover that here, but this is just an example of how we get a value that we can pass in. So in this case, I'm just doing the date. I'm not factoring for any time, but we're going to say that this transaction cannot be broadcast until February 4th. All right, and we're gonna log that so you guys can see what that value looks like. So I have a very simple function here. I have my TX object and I call lock until date. And that's a function from the BSV library that we can call on a transaction that will set the unlock time property for us. And since we're changing some properties on our transaction, we need to recalculate the fee so it's accurate. So that's why I'm calling this again, even though I called it up here. We're gonna sign it with our private key and then we're going to get the hex value that we can actually broadcast. So let me go back into node and then I'm going to run node in lock time. All right, so you can see this was our Unix time value, but I'm going to take this hex value and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to what's on chain tools and I can click broadcast transaction. So I paste the raw one in here and then let's click preview. Okay, so notice the lock time, the what's on chain has an interface to this. You can see that it's spendable only after February 4th at 8 a.m. UTC time. We can see our fee is calculated. One Satoshi a byte, that's what we want. One input to our single, uh, my money button address. If I click the scripts tab, we can see that. But what's more interesting is this JSON. So we can see that we already have a transaction ID created, but not yet broadcast. We can see the lock time set to the timestamp. Notice this sequence. If um, it sets it to the max integer value minus one, this is just a kind of a protocol level detail, but uh, the BSV library handles that for us whenever we set an in lock time. So um, I'm going to try to broadcast this transaction by clicking this button. It's going to fail. So non final. And the reason I get non final is because it's only spendable after February 4th. So you might say, why Why would I use this if I can't broadcast it? Well, that is the is what Craig talks about in this blog post. You, the real power of this is keeping this value offline. All you need is this. And you can malleate this transaction if you need to change outputs or whatever, and then just recreate it. But this is this is the value. So you would just take this hex and keep it anywhere in a security chest, encrypted on chain, wherever. And then you just broadcast it when the time comes and never to, whenever you need to actually get the money. All right, now let's walk through. We're going to comment out the lock time and we're going to do the block height. And in this case, I'm going to lock it until, block, until a few thousand blocks from now. We're around 620,000, but I'm going to lock it until this block height. So let's run our program again. And we're gonna take this hex, right click, and let's preview it. All right, so now spendable in this block or later, right? 
same attributes notice and then if I go to lock time you'll see it's the block number so let's try to broadcast this it fails non-final right now let's go back into the code and let's say a block in the past okay I'm gonna create my hex value I could broadcast this directly from node but I think it's better to kind of analyze the fields by doing it this way we'll preview it spendable in this blocker later and if I open up the main we can see where we at our latest block is down here so we we're past that time so this should be valid I'll close all these all right now we're gonna broadcast and it's successful even though our lock time was set we it, it was in the past so it goes out on the Bitcoin network so this is how you would actually spend those funds that were time locked and if I go to my money button you can see here I got a cent and that's gonna match the same transaction ID right okay so that's how you can time lock a transaction so now let's talk about multi standard multi-sig so thanks to the brilliant Bitcoin core developers um, they implemented the convoluted pay to script hash which was a means for them to do multi-signature that are greater than a two of three scheme meaning you can take you can sign only provide two signatures even though there are three public keys to match in order to send a transaction but that was because of their self-imposed limits of a script size I talk about this a bit in this blog post I wrote about how the standard is called bear but this in original Bitcoin there were no limits on the participants so fortunately in the Genesis upgrade this is going to be uncapped so in theory you can have any number of participants because the transaction size is going to be uncapped that's a much easier solution than to just say oh let's just implement this crazy thing called pay to script hash and create all this technical debt alright so I'm gonna review the code here about how we pay to a multi-sig address so there's gonna be an absence of three addresses here that is a concept that is gone now after the Genesis upgrade okay so we have the we got our same private key here and we have a public key to match and then we got another private key with its corresponding public key and then we have two arrays here where we have both keys created and appropriately named we're gonna do the same thing where we have a UTXO object so I'm gonna to need to refresh this so let's walk through that so I'm gonna take this address that corresponds because we need to spend these funds I'll go into my money button oh this will be a good example here so let me go back to the matter cloud so I'm gonna refresh this and notice it's empty because there's no UTXOs in this address anymore alright so I'm gonna put a cent back into here alright that was successful I'll go back to the matter cloud API and now we have a new UTXO so I'm gonna take this object copy it I'll paste it into here okay so now we have a UTXO that we can create a transaction so in this case I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna do from my UTXO I'm gonna do set my change address to the input so just UTXO dot address all right but notice some new things here threshold I'm gonna do a one of two scheme here meaning that I can sign with the corresponding private keys from two different public keys but with only I only need to supply one signature in order to spend the funds if I wanted to do two of two I would just change this to two and I'll demonstrate what that script looks like so it, it makes logical sense so um, before I'll go back to the end lock time I use the two method here that kind of streamlines the specification of the address and the Satoshi amount but in order the BSV library stan standard will create a pay to script hash output which we don't want to do because those are no longer valid after Genesis we want to use base multi-signature functionality so we're gonna create a script using new BSV script here and then I'm going to call build multi-sig out which is build a multi-signature output and our arguments are going to be 
our public keys array and the threshold. So the number of public keys would be the how many. So it would be of and then the threshold would be how many signatures I need. So in this case, I have two public keys and one uh, is my threshold. If I wanted to do a two of three, I would add another public key in this array and then I would say threshold equals two. And now, so next, because I'm having to manually set the script to kind of bypass the, the how the BSV library does things, I'm gonna create my own output. So I'm gonna create that output, set the script to be the one I created here, and then my Satoshi amount will be the UTXO Satoshi amount minus the fee, right? And I have the code commented. And now I have to manually add the output. This to function, does this for me but I have to in order because I'm trying to manipulate and do a standard multi-signature I had to kind of change this code in this case because we're just spinning from one I'm just gonna sign it with the first private key and then I'm gonna create the hex object so let's make sure this is saved and now I'm gonna do node multi pay to multi sig this is uh this isn't case sensitive. I named it. I did case sensitive when I named the files, but just a small little detail here. So now I'll highlight this hex, copy it. I'm gonna go to the broadcast transaction, paste it, and let's preview it. Okay. So notice it looks this kind of the same. We have our input with the Satoshi amount, and notice here we have a multi-sig indication. So these show the addresses that it's paying to, but that's not really what's going on here. Um, we're actually paying to a set of public keys. So notice my public key here and then my public key here. This matches the values here and here. So you can see one, that was the threshold that I set down here. And then two is the amount of public keys. And then this opcode is going to be run, check multi-sig. So in order to spin this, I'm going to have to supply a signature, and it's going to compare that. The script uh, operators that the miners run is going to compare that against these public keys. And if one of them is valid against this set of public keys, then it unlocks it and it'll spin the Bitcoins. All right, and you can we can see what this looks like. The script pub key is set here. All right. So let's broadcast this. Okay, we got a success and with this transaction, I'm gonna copy that hash so we have that. All right, so we we just successfully created a standard multi-sig transaction with a one of two scheme and now we want to spin those funds. So I have an appropriately named JavaScript, spin multi-sig. So we're gonna work with our same keys here I have a money button address that I'm going to send my funds back to. So I have an array of private keys and an array of public keys. So same same stuff here. Now, the way we're going to create our UTXO is a bit different. So remember, I copied my transaction ID. So let me post that here. Um, if you were implementing a real program, you would do this programmatically. But I'm going to get my Satoshi amount. And then let me get the script pub key value. So I can go to the JSON tab here, and then I can grab this right here. This is the one I want, the hex of the script pub key. This is all fairly technical stuff, but um, I think it makes sense. And our, uh, our output index is zero, so we're good on that front. Um, one interesting thing is that I sent it to a set of those public keys, but if I were to paste those addresses and try to use the API, it doesn't work. And this is because the ecosystem, the Bitcoin SV ecosystem, doesn't really support standard multi-sig because it just assumes that everyone's gonna use pay to script hash. But now that's deprecated. So like, I'll, if you haven't checked this article out that I wrote a few days ago, it'll be in the description so you can kind of see my take on that and how things need to change. But anyway, so, we have our UTXO. Um, our threshold is we know it's a one of two scheme. So we're gonna have our public key set of two, threshold one, 
and our change address is going to be address one which was the one I've been working with okay here we can simply use the two operator um, because in order to handle the input of the multi-sig we use this from extension so we use from UTXO public keys threshold there's actually good documentation on this out on the BSV github so this it talks about how you would actually implement multi-sig transactions so I'll put the link in the description of the video okay so we do the two subtract the fee from the Satoshi amounts and notice here we're not signing with a set of private keys we would if it was a two of two but we're only signing with one private key because that's sufficient I could sign with private key two as well and that would work um, I have it to where I'm putting the object to the console but I don't want to do that for this example but um so now we can spend our multi-sig because really the the stuff happens here where I have the comments where we specify the keys and the threshold all right so let's save this and now I'm gonna do node spend multi-sig all right and we have a hex let's copy this back to what's on chain paste it and we'll preview all right notice so our input is the multi-signature input and we're gonna spin this back to a money button address I have let's take a look at the JSON so um, you can see that my script sig I'm supplying a signature here if I was doing a two of two you would see two signatures here because they have to correspond to those pub keys that I demonstrated earlier let me close that out so now we're gonna broadcast this and we're successful and we routed this back to my money button account and if I refresh this I should see it yep so if I click that that's the same as me spending this multi-sig alright so just so we know that this actually works I did a very simple example but let's say I wanted to do a two threshold so let's go back I'm going to send another cent back to this original address send it let's get all right we have a UTXO from MatterCloud and we'll paste it in here okay we're gonna do a two threshold meaning I'm gonna need to supply two signatures for this transaction all right and we'll do node pay to multi-sig all right we got our hex preview it all right we have the kind of the same thing here now let's take the JSON representation and oops I actually wanted to look at the scripts so notice this time there's a two so this is how many signatures that need to be supplied to this set of public keys and then it runs the check multi-sig op code let me close these out and let's broadcast this all right so we got our hex we successfully broadcast that transaction now I'm gonna go back to the spend and copy my TX ID in here and then I want to get the script pub key from the transaction I just broadcast the hex value of that let's copy that into here we only have one output so output index is zero the first one and now we need it's not going to be enough to only sign with one so let's actually look try that so I'm going to spin multi-sig so I get an error um, provided public keys don't match to the provided output script so it failed because I only tried to do with one private key but I need to do with a set so I'll just change the name to private keys my array 
so we can create the two signatures that are necessary. Oops. I think I must have messed something up here. I have the public keys. Did I save it? Oops, threshold. Gotta change that to two. Okay, now we got our hex. Sorry about that, but that's a good demonstration of how this stuff works. And now we're gonna broadcast this one. Preview. All right, so what's most interesting here is the scripts. Um, so notice we got two signatures this time. So the first one here and then the second one here because we're gonna need to provide both of those in order to spin this, these Bitcoins instead of just one like we did the previous time. So now I'm gonna broadcast and it's successful. If I go back to my money button, refresh, I got my transaction, which is the same, starting with four. So I successfully spent funds in a two of two standard multi-sig. Now, if we really wanna get crazy, um, Craig, he talks about how you could have multiple people needing to sign off on these in lock time transactions. Um, a one of two is useful here because he talks about grandparents passing them back and forth to each other in case they need to change and re-sign, but how one of them could always sign. Or you could do two of two where you pass them back and forth where one grandparent signs and then if the other one um, needs to sign to approve it, they could do that. Um, but ch like I mentioned at the beginning, check out that blog post to kind of see the functional use case for this. But I can easily incorporate, let's do a lock until block height. Um, trying to think how I want to do this. Well, I don't know if I'll do that for this tutorial, but I think it's pretty straightforward. I would take that. Let's actually do this in the pay to multi-sig one. So I had my output. Yeah, so let's do this. And then we'll call lock block height multi-sig TX. And then let's say 60. Actually, let's put it way in the future. All right, let's save this. So this is our pay to multi-sig. Let's take our same address that I've been using for all these examples. And I'm gonna pay another cent to it. <clears throat> All right, go back to MatterCloud, get our UTXO. We'll copy it into here, just as we did before. All right, so now we let's do a one of two again. So one threshold to set of public keys, but also time locked. All right, so let's do, let's do our pay to multi-sig. All right, we got a hex here. So the idea is that we would keep this offline. It's only a cent, so it's not really, no one really cares about it. But now we have one that's gonna pay to a multi-signature output that's spendable in block 640,000 or later. So way in the future. So a use case is you could lock up. This is combining two here. So you could have something where, okay, one of my kids can spend these funds in, you know, a year or however long these blocks are. Um, but this is a means how we can kind of combine two standard functionalities of Bitcoin that were there from 0.1 and we're gonna have full access to that in a few hours, which is very exciting. So let me know what you guys think. Um, like, subscribe, all that good stuff if you want to. Um, let me know what tutorials you wanna see. Let me know your thoughts about this. I'll put all the code out there for you guys to see and all the links. And you can find me on Twitter, Twitch. Twitter is Crypto Acorns, Twitch. I'm user 145. Um, feel free to reach out. All right, thank you guys. See you next time.